Every family has an origin. We can all trace back our family trees throughout history, but there are moments, some big, some small, that truly change the trajectory of our future. For Vito Corleone, that moment was right now. This one gunshot, this one decision, triggered a cycle of violence that would continue for decades, handed down from generation to generation. So let's examine how Vito Corleone evolves throughout Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather, part one and two, how he develops from an orphan to an immigrant to a father to a don. When Vito was just nine years old, his father Antonio was murdered for refusing to pay tribute to Don Cheech. And now at his funeral, Vito's brother Paolo was shot dead too after he swore to take revenge. His mother pleads with Don Cheech to spare her son's life, as he's just a young boy who cannot even speak yet. But he refuses, suspecting that one day Vito will grow up to be a man and he too will seek revenge like his brother or rebel like his father. At this moment, his mother sacrifices herself so that Vito can get a head start and run for his life, with family friends placing him on a boat to New York City. The Godfather is a story about immigration, of how you take a piece of your family, your history, your country, wherever you go but it's also a story about the life cycle, the rises and falls, the patterns that emerge in our lives that perpetuate over generations. Vito Corleone arrives on American shores with nothing, no money, no language, no family. When the immigration officer is signing him in, he confuses Vito's real last name, Andolini, with his city of origin, Corleone, and renames him Vito Corleone. This small moment now permanently branding Vito with the trauma of his past. He is legally named after the city he came from, the city where his parents and brother were murdered, an entire family's legacy being attached to the idea of unfinished family business and revenge. In New York, Vito grew up and became a father. As an orphan who witnessed his own family's death, his children, his own flesh and blood, are incredibly important to him. He will do absolutely anything for them, as he saw his family make the ultimate sacrifice for him. He starts off making an honest living in a grocery store, until the owner is intimidated by the local Don, Don Fanucci, who forces the owner to fire Vito and hire his nephew instead. This sets Vito on a trajectory of petty crime, as his friend leads him into stealing an expensive rug. This incident is what creaks Vito's mind open to the possibilities of committing minor crimes in order to get by. If this is the price he must pay to feed his family, then he'll take that risk and make that sacrifice. But then Don Fanucci hears of Vito and his friend's work, and wants a cut of it, just like he wants a cut of everything in the neighborhood. This is the same crossroads that his father Antonio encountered, and he knows that he refused to pay tribute to Don Cheech. When Vito talks to his friends about it, they're all intimidated and are willing to pay $200 each to Don Fanucci as he requested. But Vito suggests that his friends only pay $50 each, and he'll volunteer to go talk and reason with him. They're naturally skeptical, as no one can convince Don Fanucci of anything. He isn't one to negotiate. No matter how far Vito has come in life, traveling overseas as an orphan, becoming a father, the same cycle continues. There's always someone in town who bullies and intimidates everyone for cash. So if you can't stop the cycle, become a part of it on your own terms. In this moment, Vito has his friends pay just $50, a quarter of the original 200. By making this choice, he is now casting himself as the new Don. That this is just nature. A younger, more dangerous guy is willing to do the same work for a cheaper price. 
It's just business, not personal. When Vito sits down with Don Fanucci and gives him a fraction of the amount he was asked for, he is emulating his father's refusal to bend the knee to Don Cheech. It's not in his blood to get bullied around, as he's seen how far these people will go if left unchecked. Witnessing his own mother's death up close is also what makes Vito desensitized to killing. It's been a part of him since just nine years old. Fanucci admires Vito's guts and says he'll find him some work, but Fanucci does not realize that he has become complacent. Vito senses weakness and tracks him home, where he kills Fanucci and takes his money clip. In this moment, Vito is not just taking back control of the neighborhood and his own destiny, but he's living up to his family name. He sets up a legal business front that imports olive oil and takes care of the people in the neighborhood. Vito is not a callous man, he was just protecting his friends and family from intimidation. You see, Vito lives by a code that family is all that matters, and as an adopted orphan, he understands that family isn't just about blood, it's about loyalty, those that are looking out for you. And he extends that to the neighborhood in some form that he'll look out for you as long as you look out for him. It's not so much about extortion, but favors, creating opportunities for those he cares about. As to Vito, business is just about feeding and protecting your family by any means necessary. But now that he's on top, now that he's stopped the cycle of his family being bullied and oppressed by local dons, it's time for Vito to return to his hometown, to visit the man who murdered his family. This was his fate from the moment he left. He was to be killed due to his name, so he fled to America, where he was renamed, but named after his hometown, the location of his unfinished business. So it would never leave his memory, those haunting moments tattooed into his identity, and now he gets to resolve his unfinished business. He built his empire by supporting his community, helping Italian Americans rise the social ranks of the city. Over the years, he became a grandfather and a godfather, valuing his immediate family's well-being over everything. But as more and more families begin to control different corners of the city, it becomes more competitive and the number of voices in the room becomes crowded. Everyone wants a bigger and bigger piece with more and more influence. Vito's vision for the future was that his business would become more legitimate, that his son Michael might become a senator. So when he's offered the chance to get into the narcotics business, he turns it down, as long term, this could jeopardize the prosperity of the community. Vito has always invested in the idea of building a better tomorrow for our children, but this would be a step backwards. He fears what could become of his city and of his reputation among his political contacts if he were to begin selling drugs, what he considers a dirty business. But in that meeting, his firstborn, Sonny, hints at having interest in the deal. This one small gesture, this hint, is enough for a hit to be put out on veto. He's shot while collecting fruit from his favorite grocery store part of his daily habits, always remaining loyal to his roots. Although he survives, a mob war is triggered, and while he's still recovering, his firstborn son is shot and killed. Look how they massacred my boy. There's a unique devastation for Vito to see his son's body, as it echoes his own father Antonio and his first son Paolo being shot dead except now Vito is alive to see his son pass. The world around Vito had changed. His dreams of the perfect immigrant story, from rags to riches, from orphan to the head of a huge family, from illegitimate dealings to aspirations of clean, legitimate power, no longer seemed possible. In a world where everything is just business, not personal, Vito had expected his personal values to prevent the business from growing. But when you choose to stop adapting, another young, ambitious man with less to lose will take your place, mirroring the same cycle that occurred decades earlier when he took out Don Fanucci. The end of one cycle 
marks the beginning of another, and time marches on. Having always valued family, nature, and his roots, it is fitting that Vito died chasing his grandson around Italian tomato trees in the sun, and as he departed, he left the family business in the hands of his son Michael, never having to see his reign, his betrayal of his values, or his fall. But the Corleone name lived on, a family tree forever tied to the principles of power, loyalty, and revenge and it all grew from the root of one man's will to survive. Vito Andalini Corleone Well, you've made it this far, so you might as well like, comment, and subscribe to help get this channel to the next level.